It's wonderful to be here. Um, I'll tell you, but this is a, it, we're taking a little bit of a left turn here, but I think we'll end up in the same place. But So I was interested in uh, these areas of health, community, and media. And the way I got there, uh, I was doing my geriatric medicine fellowship in Boston, and I, I got an email saying, hey, would anybody like to come on to this public access television show to talk about issues in aging health? And I was on vacation when the email came and I missed it. And I felt so bad because I thought, oh my God, this would have been so much fun, you know. And then I, ca I called the office. I said, oh, you know, that would have been really cool. They said, what are you talking about? We couldn't get anybody to do it. <laughs> and I was thinking, this is a huge academic system in Boston, a whole faculty, fellows, residents, and they couldn't get a single person to take an hour, you know, you know it's 10 minutes of TV, but take an hour out of their schedule to go on and talk about these issues that would impact a lot of people. So I started thinking about the bigger picture too, that you know the statistics that there are about 7,000 certified uh, geriatricians, and at the time we were looking ahead uh, to the 10,000 people who would be turning 65 every day, now a reality obviously. Um, so I started thinking about how I could uh, refine that area and uh, build some expertise in the area of uh, health media, particularly for an older adult uh, population and focus in my area of expertise as a geriatrician. Uh, so then I came out to UCLA to do this health services uh, research fellowship and I got, thankfully, I was already doing all my community talks, community access television, but this is where I really started to, to, to build this part of the circle, the community partnership element, uh, because I was partnered with the uh, city of LA, Department of Aging. And the beautiful thing was they already had a show. They had Aging in LA on Channel 35, hosted by Paul Peterson, uh, that was hosted, you know, they had done hundreds of episodes, and I looked through the backlogs, and it's great stuff, one-on-one -on -one interviews with Bob Butler, where they really get into the details, uh, interviews with Dodger legends talking about life and aging, but it still was aging in LA. You know, it wasn't, uh, well, I don't know if it's such an improvement, but now it's aging well in LA. <laughs> <laughs> but so, with all due respect to the people who make the show who are amazing, I told them I wanted to do this stuff about, you know, segments about geriatric health and everything. They were really excited about the segments concept. I said, yeah, let's have a cooking segment and let's have, you know, uh, activity segment and this. But then when it came time to do it, they said, okay, so we're going to turn the camera on, just talk for 10 minutes about something. You know, and I said, oh, I don't think that's really going to work. First of all, believe it or not, I'm actually pretty shy. And I also think I'm not that smart, you know, I mean, things are changing all the time. I don't have all the answers. Um, so I didn't really want to do that. And uh, thankfully then I, I, I since I kind of put my foot down on that, I had to come up with an alternative. So what I did is I went to a senior acting class at the Hollywood Senior Center, uh, uh, Buddy Powell's class for commercial acting and where people are really training to be in television commercials and a lot of people I've met through this program have a very thriving career as a result of this. A whole nother career that they had never imagined. And even for those who don't have the thriving career, wonderful friendships and a whole new community, everything. So I went to them and I said, hey, these are the topics I want to talk about. What should we do? And we kind of started brainstorming. So the first segment was talking with your doctor. I figured that was perfect. I thought that was kind of ironic that I was just going to talk about talking with your doctor for 10 minutes. <laughs> so we did talking with your doctor. So I gave them this wonderful booklet from the NIA about talking with your doctor. And they would go home and study it. And yeah, they were actors, so they were a little more comfortable on camera but they weren't acting. We would talk about, you know, I had Fran Phillips telling me about, oh, I don't just go for a second opinion, I go for a third opinion, because I say, well, you, you know, you would with your car, she says, oh, for my car I get a third opinion. <laughs> so, we then wanted to focus on, we did the talking with your doctor, we did a little bit of exercise in the gym, but we really wanted to focus specifically on this area of um, 
physical activity. Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't care about these words here. This is the fun part, right? So, oh, and you know, isn't it? It's so sad now that Jules Hauser's passed away, but he's on there. So, this slide I love because obviously it's tons of fun. It says it all. But this brings me back to where I met Katie. See. We were at a gerontology meeting in Atlanta and it was the first aging means business and we thought, we were really excited about, we came from, uh, you, uh, Katie had an academic and business background, I'm stuck in academic and thinking about business and, but we were looking at a lot of what was presented at the meeting and it was really stale. You know, it was just kind of, we just had, we were just part of this emerging zeitgeist of all these people, and there's so many of us out there who are trying not to think about aging in the same old way, um, but not trying to be deluded in our thinking about it. I mean, as a geriatrician, I, when we talk about real challenges, I see these real challenges every day in my office, in my long-term care rounds, in my hospital rounds. But we still, we wanted to think about it differently. So it's not that everybody's gonna be a breakdancing grandma, but we wanted a new vibe, you know? We wanted it to be something that popped a little bit and was alive. Uh, but then I did have this serious, uh, you know, kind of research question, but reality that I had to contend with of uh, the fact that we have this crisis where, you know, sedentary lifestyle and lack of recommended physical activity uh, is highly prevalent. You know, a lot of older adults are not exercising much at all, definitely not as much as they should. And what was striking about these statistics um, was that they have not changed at all. As long as they've been doing this survey, they have, you know, we have, s our culture has changed so much about around exercise and it seems so mainstream now, you know, and everybody's about going to the gym and rollerblading and whatever. Um, but these numbers haven't budged. And there have been so many, I mean, I, I've been at meetings for years now where there's a poster this, presentation this, and everybody's done so many different things, but yet we haven't really made an impact. So, uh, and then thinking locally, because I'm working with the city of LA, there are these, in the, when they survey older Angelinos, they found that this is something people wanted more programming in. This is something they wanted more information about, about how to be active and how to lead an active lifestyle. So uh, we took our work where we were sort of doing these interviews and uh, experiences in senior centers and doing our segments, and we decided, and, and we actually we had convened a meeting and everybody got together and, and it was a very mostly older group but very intergenerational in a way and uh, one person said you know what I got it I know what we should do we should do a reality television show we should do like biggest loser except just about healthy aging so that's how we got on the move okay so on the move it was this community brainchild and we were gonna do our fun exciting show about active aging um, and so we had to cast our reality show and so we put flyers up in various senior centers and we had cast open casting calls and we had all these great people show up I mean I seriously I'm so glad we have those tapes somewhere I don't know Brenda was there I don't know where those tapes are but we had just the greatest people and some people really just wanted to be on TV that was cool we had a, we had it all we had it all but well, what was interesting, what kind of threw me through a loop, but I think it turned out well, although I want to go back and have it the other way too, is everybody who showed up who was in their 80s or 90s was like Schwarzenegger, like pumping iron, huge biceps, <laughs> could put me down under the table, like, you know, for doing mixed martial arts on the weekend, going to the gym every day. So we kind of had to retool at that point. So we had to have, our contestants were in their 60s and 70s, and then we'd have these mentors pop in who were in their 80s and 90s who could kind of show them. And it ended up fitting really well with the data when we had experts like Dr. Walter Bortz come on and he talked about, you know, how you can affect your, your health statistically, the turning point. I mean, it really is, 
in your 60s and 70s that as much as young people need to be exercising, that's great, and I need to exercise more, the time when it really counts, I mean, you're going to die of a trauma when you're younger, so don't worry about it. But <laughs> when you're older, you need to exercise, okay? So we had these people in their 70s and 80s uh, mentoring our, our folks, and it's just great. So uh, I'll show you a little example here, but basically six ep we ended up doing a six-episode series, six 30-minute episodes. I'd love to have a more condensed, we couldn't really go viral on YouTube with a 30-minute episode. We needed like some, we need some 10-second version. But we had different themes. Every episode was at a different location because the idea is in the middle of the show, we throw up a PSA for the Department of Aging and we give a number and we say, hey, whatever you just saw them doing here on the show, call the number and you can go do it yourselves. So these were programs, you know, I mean, you really can go. We were at St. Barnabas doing Zumba on Microsoft Xbox Connect 360. You can go there and do that. So that's why we were, that's how we were showing it. And then we had a different expert for each show. Uh, Walter Bortz uh, was great. I'm going to show a little clip of him. Vivian Sells was, we used as a community leader, talking about getting her friends active, getting her community active. She does it through her church. Gary Small talked about the impact of exercise and healthy lifestyle on cognitive health. Colin Milner, President of the International Council on Active Aging. Uh, talked about kind of the, the, the international movement in this area. Uh, Tom Levant, actually that's a fun quick aside, the show was going to be called The Movement. <laughs> Some people got it, okay. I like that because I like the idea of a movement, but Colin Mill, uh, Tom Levant, get a little uh, political piece in there, a little get our city moving. And we had Elaine Lane, which was great because she just sort of brought in uh, the spirit of her late husband, Jack LaLanne, who now I've looked back and I, in awe. Wow. I mean, he's just, he's so cool, and she's so cool. She's just a happening, like, uh, energetic lady. And Patricia Bragg, who's this really energetic, bottle of energy, health food product sensation. Her father was, like, the pioneer of the first health food store and got all these uh, people into health and wellness. So let's take a break here and see a little example and they're all there which is the great thing so we've got you know each episode all six episodes a little news coverage that gives you a little more background on it a little teaser reel I'll just go right into some of the first episode here show a quick example fast forward a bit well, Los Angeles oh, we got for a whole new take on fitness and active lifestyles our new series on the our new series, On the Moon. In the coming episodes, we'll follow the lives of 12 individuals taking on new challenges to become active and get fit. To help us get there and help us meet our healthy and active aging goals, we have Dr. Scott Kaiser, a family physician specializing in geriatric medicine. So take it away, Dr. Scott Kaiser. Help us get on the moon. We've identified 12 individuals. 12 individuals who are at a turning point in their lives who will embark upon a friendly competition to get active, fit, and take charge of their health. These 12 contestants will need to take the leap from being sedentary, self-professed couch potatoes, to being active, fit people who embrace the notion of motion and can't imagine a life that's not on the move. And now let's meet our 12 contestants. From the blue team. Hi, my name is Mariko. I'm 65 years old and I've got to get moving again. I'm David. I'm 62 years old and I haven't exercised since the 80s. My name is David. I'm 70 years old and I just want to have fun. I'm Levada. I'm 66 years old and I hate exercise. I'm Jim. 71 year old and I'm ready to be on the boat. I'm sure yeah. I'm 63 years old. I'm here to have fun and to meet my little sister Lee. <laughs> and from the red team. Hi, I'm Gloria. I'm 62 and I have a dream. I'm Mary. I'm 65 years old and it is time for me to get on the move. James D. 72 years old and I've got to do something about all of this. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Arturo. I am 65 years old and I need to get more active. I'm Elkie, and I'm 72  
fine, and I'm here to have fun, and I'm going to beat my sister. <laughs> Our contestants have been assigned to these teams based on extensive physical and psychological testing. They all underwent fitness tests, medical evaluations. Yes. They completed surveys and provided extensive interviews yes. so that we could prepare yeah, two it. evenly matched good, teams right. based on their right starting that's, point. That's fine. That's fine. I, I, I'm glad I ran out of time because I want you guys to go on to YouTube and check it out. Later in that, web, um, in that episode, Walter Bortz uh, gives a talk, a little talk about how important exercise is. It's the best prescription. It's cheap. It's readily available. And it's good for your sex life. What else can do that? And then June, our 94-year-old, now 95, gym goer who goes to the gym every day, and we have footage of her in the gym, she comes out and she goes, well, I'm glad you mentioned sex life. Because it just, you know, that, that's what it's all about. So um, great stories, all sorts of wonderful stories here. It was a wonderful experience. And now our next step is we're using this as the core uh, backbone for a curriculum in, for wellness clubs in senior centers. Um, that's what we're working on now. We want people to watch the episodes, get excited about it, and um, really be mentored and mimic uh, what they see and have spin-off competitions. We want every senior center to have their own on-the-move competition so that you go to senior centers and as much as bingo is wonderful and as much as you know getting together and eating uh, congregate meals is wonderful, we want to see these be hubs of activity where people are getting together, exercising, and doing what they can to improve their health and well-being. So thank you all so much, and I look forward to speaking with any of you. Thank you.